friends today we would be synthesizing lead for oxide or lead dioxide lead dioxide also mistakenly known as lead peroxide is a very strong oxidizing agent it is dark brown to black amorphous powder for the synthesis of lead dioxide we require lead acetate trihydrate sodium hydroxide calcium hypochlorite that is bleach and 30 percentage nitric acid the first step is to weigh out 23.75 grams of lead acetate trihydrate. Here I have already measured the weight and now I am adding the salt into a flat bottom flask. Now we will be adding 50 ml of ice cold water into the lead acetate. This temperature is mandatory because the lead hydroxide formed in the next step is thermally unstable. Mix the contents to dissolve the solid lead acetate in water. Now we weigh out 6.25 grams of sodium hydroxide and we take it in a beaker and we will be adding a very minimum amount of water that is here I am only adding about 25 milliliters of water and dissolving the solid sodium hydroxide in it. This step generates a lot of heat so we have to cool this solution before proceeding to the next step. Record the initial temperature of the lead acetate solution which should be less than 30 degrees. Now we will be adding the sodium hydroxide very slowly into the lead acetate. You can see that there is formation of a white precipitate which is lead hydroxide. Mix the contents very well and care should be taken that the temperature should not rise more than 30 degrees Celsius. After adding the whole of the sodium hydroxide solution, record the final temperature. It should be below 30 degrees. Now we will be adding a slurry prepared by mixing solid calcium hypochlorite in very minimal amount of water. Calcium hypochlorite is commercially known as the bleaching powder which has 33% of its available chlorine and it is commonly used as disinfectant to purify water. The brown color you see is the lead for oxide being formed because the chlorine present in the calcium hypochlorite acts as an oxidizing agent and oxidizes the lead hydroxide to form the oxide. As we know that lead for oxide is having a dark brown to black color but the color we obtained is not so black as compared to the lead for oxide that is because of the presence of other oxides of lead like PB3O4 in it. Now we slowly warm the contents of the flask. We should not boil the solution quickly as the lead hydroxide will get decomposed. By giving a slow warmth, all the reactants will take part in the chemical reaction without decomposing. After all the hydroxides have been reacted, now we boil the contents for about 30 minutes. After boiling the contents for 30 minutes, we take it out from the heat source and allow it to cool. Now, we will be washing this precipitate a couple of times to remove all the contaminants. This precipitate contains the oxides of lead.
Rinse the precipitate by adding generous amount of water and allowing the precipitate to settle down. Then we decant of the solution. Repeat this procedure 5 to 6 times. After allowing the precipitate to settle, now we decant of the supernatant solution. I have rinsed the precipitate for 6 times now and now the final solution after settling down I am decanting it off. You can see the brown precipitate underneath. After vigorous rinsing procedure, now we will filter this precipitate. Look at the brown precipitate. This is the crude precipitate of lead oxides. I can't specifically say that only one oxide is present in it. So our next aim is to convert all the oxides into lead for oxide. First of all, I transfer this brown colored precipitate into a beaker. Now I am adding 62.5 ml of 30% nitric acid. You can observe very clearly that on adding the nitric acid the color has turned black. This is because nitric acid has oxidized all the oxides of lead into lead for oxide. Give a thorough stirring so that all the oxides will react with the acid. Now we boil the contents of this beaker for about 10 minutes so that all the nitric acid will react. The primary aim of adding the nitric acid was to dissolve the unreacted lead hydroxide, other oxides of lead, calcium hydroxide and calcium carbonate present in the bleaching powder. After boiling the contents and rinsing them thoroughly, we filter the precipitate. Observe the dark brown color of lead dioxide. After drying the precipitate, we will be pulverizing it and then we will be storing it. A word of caution, lead salts are carcinogenic, hence avoid direct contact. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you loved my video, don't forget to subscribe my channel and click on the bell button.